Hey everyone, this is Kyle from Money at 30, and it's time for another roundup of recent personal finance, credit card, and travel news. Even though February was a short month, it was still filled with plenty of news that could affect your wallet. So I've once again compiled some of the top stories from the past month to share, including a new feature in Cash App, the unfortunate demise of a unique credit card, the arrival of a food delivery rewards card, and more. First up, Cash App recently introduced a new savings account, although it's pretty lackluster. Over the years, Cash App has added a number of different features, from their cash card to the ability to trade Bitcoin and stocks. Now, they've also added a savings account. After opting into this feature, you can set up a savings goal and make deposits towards reaching that goal. Plus, you can select to have your cash card purchases rounded up to the nearest dollar and have the difference dropped into your savings, although you'll need to choose between this roundup option and the similar auto-invest one. While finding easy and painless ways to set aside money is great, a huge missing part of this account is any interest. Considering that many online accounts are currently nearing 4% APY, the fact that this Cash App account offers nothing makes it a no-go for me. But if it helps you reach your short-term savings goals, I suppose it works well enough. Next, Personal Capital has officially changed its name to Empower. More than two years after the popular tool Personal Capital was acquired by Empower Retirement, the service has changed its name and is now also known as Empower. More specifically, the tool itself seems to go by the name Empower Personal Dashboard. In turn, users can now log into their account by visiting Empower.com, selecting Personal Dashboard under the Login tab, and using the same credentials as before. Funny enough, although going to personalcapital.com now redirects you to Empower, once you log in, you'll notice that the URL is still the old one. Luckily, in terms of what Empower Personal Dashboard has to offer, not much of anything has changed aside from the banner. So whatever it's called, it's a tool I'd still recommend. In credit card news, Paceline has announced that it's shutting down its current rewards card. In a video I made about cards I was eyeing, I mentioned that the Paceline card sounded interesting, but that I wasn't sure it would last. Well, sadly, that hunch proved correct last month as the company announced it was closing down the Paceline card. If you missed it, the card offered a base of 2.5% back on wellness purchases and 1.5% back on everything else, but doubled those rates to 5% and 3% respectively when cardholders reached their Paceline streaks by completing 150 minutes of exercise per week. Overall, this is a disappointing development as the card was fairly original and potentially lucrative for cardholders despite its $60 annual fee. The card's demise was also made worse when it seemed as though customers who purchased a new Apple Watch as part of the car's intro bonus would be on the hook for the remaining balances, but this has seemingly since been cleared up, with Paceline paying out the remaining statement credits. In any case, while the company says it intends to introduce an even better program in the future, I wouldn't get my hopes up. As one card goes away, another has emerged as Chase and DoorDash have launched their co-branded offering. After originally teasing a new rewards card late last year, the DoorDash rewards card from Chase has now launched. Starting with those rewards, the card earns 4% back on DoorDash and Caviar orders, as well as 3% back on dining purchases made directly with restaurants. Plus, cardholders also earn 2% back on groceries and 1% back on all of the purchases. By the way, this is real cash back and can be redeemed not only for DoorDash orders, but also for statement credits, direct deposits to banking accounts, and more. New cardholders can also get one free year of Dash Pass, which is a $96 value. But there's a small catch here as the service will automatically renew at full price unless cardholders either cancel before then or spend at least $10,000 on the card during the year. Although the DoorDash rewards card is arguably better than expected in some ways, I think there are still much better options. For one, the card does bear some resemblance to the Capital One Saver one, which offers 3% on dining, 3% on entertainment, 3% on groceries, and 3% back on select streaming service purchases. Plus, that card's $200 welcome bonus after $500 in spending during your first three months, best the $100 after $500 spent in the first three months offer from the DoorDash card. So unless you're a hardcore DoorDash fan, I think it's best to look elsewhere. Bridging our credit card card and travel news segments, American Express's Delta Sky Miles cards have added a new feature that helps flyers save on award flights. In addition to the numerous perks that Amex's lineup of Delta Sky Miles cards offer, now customers can get a discount on flights booked with miles. A new benefit called Takeoff 15 has been added to most Sky Miles card, with the only exception being the No Annual Fee Blue card. With this feature, cardholders can now take advantage of an automatic 15% discount on award travel redemptions, meaning they'll spend 15% fewer miles for flights. However, this discount only applies to Delta-operated flights, doesn't impact the taxes or fees that are still due, and can't be used with the Miles Plus Cash booking option. Overall, this new perk is an easy win, as its addition comes with no removal of other benefits or any hike to the card's annual fees. So, if you're a Delta Sky Miles card member, hopefully you'll be able to make use of this feature. Finally, a greatly expanded Amex Centurion Lounge is now open at SeaTac. 
Following the recent reopening of the SFO Centurion, Seattle Tacoma International Airport has now opened its expanded lounge location. The updated Centurion is nearly three times the size of the older one, which had already been expanded once. Of note, the new lounge has also moved from the previous Concourse B location to the mezzanine level of the central terminal. Seeing as this is Seattle, it makes sense that the SeaTac Lounge is the first Centurion to feature a full-service coffee bar called Blue Rose by American Express. Personally, I'm very interested in checking out this updated location the next time I happen to be in Seattle, but if you don't end up getting into the Centurion, there's also a great Delta Sky Club in Concourse A as well. Hopefully this roundup gave you a better idea about what these updates are all about, but for more on these stories, I'll have links to some of my articles in the description box down below. Also, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment, and be sure to subscribe because we have new videos every week and roundups like this one during the first week of every month. So thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time here on Money at 30.